So here are some um, equations, or sorry, here are some calculations involving um, calorimetry, and we're going to just go through how we do these. The first couple are a bit easier, then we go into looking at calibration and explaining how that all works as well. So first of all, this is our first problem, and it says a styrofoam cup calorimeter. So obviously, we can just use a it's a very very basic type of calorimeter where we have a styrofoam cup, a bit of a cap on it, and a simple um, thermometer in there. Um, and we have our electrical current going in there to calibrate it as well. Off to our power pack. All right, so our cu cup is insulated and we have our liquid in there. So it's a very, very simple um, calorimeter that you can use at home. Um, this is calibrated by adding heat to the water with an electrical heater, obviously like this. And when 1.350 joules of heat is added to the temperature, added the temperature of the calorimeter raises rises by um, 3.5 degrees Celsius. When one gram of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in the same calorimeter, the temperature rises by 1.6 degrees Celsius. Calculate the cal um, calorimeter constant, that means the calibration factor, and the enthalpy of the solution for one mole of um, sodium hydroxide. Let's have a look at how we're going to do this. First of all, we're going to look at our calibration factor which is the calorimeter calorimeter constant. For this, we know that our calibration factor is equal to the energy supplied divided by the delta temperature that we got for this, for when we added the energy to it. Our energy supplied was 1.350 joules, and our increase in temperature was 3.5 degrees Celsius. So therefore, we type into the calculator, calculator, we get 1.350 divided by 3.5, and our calorimeter constant is going to be um, 0 0.3816, um, and it's going to be joules per centigrade, degree centigrade. And that's our calibration factor, or our calorimetry constant for that. Now we need to find out our enthalpy for a solution of one molar of sodium hydroxide. Now, what we're going to look for is our energy. And here, we can see we've got a um, change in the temperature. So our energy here is going to be equal to our calibration factor times by our delta T, which means 0 0.386 times our delta T for our actual um, solution. When one gram of sodium hydroxide is dissolved, it raises by this much. 1.6, so we work out our energy is going to be times 1.6 is going to be 0 0.617 joules was expanded, expanded by this um, dissolving of sodium hydroxide. Now we want to know for one mole, because this isn't for one mole, this is for one gram of sodium hydroxide. So we need to find out number of moles that we're using. So number of moles of sodium hydroxide can be equal to the mass divided by the molar mass, which is going to be 1 divided by our molar mass, which is going to be 23 plus 1 plus 16, which is 40. So 1 divided by 40, nope, 1 divided by 40 equals 0 0.0025 mole. So this is the number of mole of sodium hydroxide, gave me that. So to find um, energy per mole, we're going to get our 0 0.617 and divide it by how many moles we actually have. It's going to be 0 0.025, which is going to come out to, if we look at this, um, 0 0.617 divided by our answer. 24.68 joules per mole. So that's joules per mole. There we have it. So first of all, calibration factor, because we've calibrated it using this much energy, and then we have our the amount of energy we used, our number of mole of sodium hydroxide, then our energy per mole. So we have our energy per mole. 
And that is our solution of how to do this question. It's a pretty, pretty, pretty basic one. Um, and the next one is very, very similar to that. Now this is um, heat of solution. If we need to write an equation for this, what we could write is NaOH as a solid. When it dissolves, it can either become aqueous or it becomes our dissociation. So we can have it dissolving into our ions there. So that's what, that means delta H will be equal to negative 24.68 joules. Okay. Delta H is negative because we had a temperature increase in our question as well. So that's another thing to remember. So writing our thermochemical equation, we write the solubility, how it dissolves, and we show our delta H as being positive or negative. And in this case, because our temperature increased, we have our delta H as being negative. That explains how to do this question. Okay, second question. Um, a calorimeter with a calibration factor of 52.3 joules per centigrade was used to determine the molar heat of solution for potassium nitrate. So again, it's a molar heat of solution, means when you're just dissolving something into a solution, um, it's basically the heat or um, the change when you're dissolving something. Dissolve one gram of um, potassium nitrate in water at 25 degrees Celsius. When this is done in a calorimeter above, so when it's done in this calor calorimeter, the final temperature is this. We're going to find out our molar heat of solution of potassium nitrate. So, how do we do that? Well, we have a calibration factor already, and that's here. I'm going to write so calibration factor equals 52.3 joules per centigrade. Okay? Now, we have a change in temperature here. What's our delta T? A delta T is going to be equal to 25, take away 22.8. So our change in temperature is going to be 25, take away 22.8, 2.2 degrees Celsius. So what we're going to look at is work out how much energy was either expended or taken in during this. And obviously our temperature decreased, so our temperature is going to take in. That obviously means it's endo. So our delta H will be positive. Just remember remind myself of that. So energy is equal to um, our calibration factor times our delta T, which is equal to 52.3 times 2.2, which is equal to 52.3, 115 point uh, 0 0.6 so our joules was used okay so that's how much energy has been changed so energy has been um, taken in by the solution when this dissolved now we want to know the molar heat of solution so how much per mole we only use one gram of potassium nitrate so our number of moles is equal to of sorry of potassium nitrate it's equal to the mass over molar mass, which is equal to one gram, divided by whatever the molar mass of this is, which is going to be what's potassium is about 40 plus um, 14 plus 3 times 16. So what's that? 40 plus 14 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16. It's 102. So 1 divided by 102 for our molar mass of potassium nitrate is equal to right, 1 divided by 102 equal to 9.8 yep, times 10 to the negative 3 mole is what we have. So therefore our um, delta H equals, well it's going to be energy divided by moles so it equals 115.06 divided by 9.8 times 10 to negative 3 so if I just put that into here so if we go on to 115.06 divided by our answer from last time 
we get a big number, which is 1, sorry, 11,736.12. That's going to be joules per mole, which is equal to 11.74 kilojoules per mole. And that's our delta H. Our delta H is going to be positive or negative. Well, our temperature decreased, as it says here. So therefore, delta H is going to be positive. 11.74 kilojoules per mole. So that means if I write out a thermochemical equation, potassium nitrate, solid, when dissolved in water, goes to our potassium aqueous plus nitrate aqueous, negative, delta H equals positive 11.74 kilojoules per mole. And that's using a calibration factor which was given to you. So the idea that we have a calibration factor, a temperature change, the energy is equal to the calibration factor multiplied by the energy change. Okay. In both of these questions, question one and question two, we haven't had to bother with um, calculating our calibration factor, but the next question we will, and we'll go through how that works when we get to it.